Hi, welcome everybody. This is Bruce with Lebowski Studio. Today's video is going to be uh, part three of how I make my uh, floater frame moldings. And uh, in this video, I'm going to take the finished sanded frame and show you how I finish it. In this case, I'll be, believe it or not, spray painting it. You'll see how I do that uh, going forward. And also, I'll cover how I then attach the panel into the floater frame. So, enjoy the video. If you have any comments, drop them in the box below and let me know what you think or if you have questions, okay? All right, let's get going. Thing. Okay, so here we are. And before I get started, if you're uh, watching my channel for the first time, I appreciate you taking the time to stop by. I invite you to take a look at older videos, see what I do and all that sort of thing. And uh, subscribe if you like what you see. For everyone else, thank you for continuing to watch and for everybody, like to let you know that I'm now on Instagram at Habowski Studio. Uh, follow me there. I post uh, works in progress, other art related things, so pretty cool stuff. And of course, you can find me on Facebook, and uh, the links will be in the description box below. Uh, for this video, I will just be using this small 6x8 frame. Um, you, this uh, method that I'm going to be showing you can be applied to whatever size frame that you make. But uh, this is the finished product from uh, the previous videos, which if you haven't seen them, you should take a look at those and, and follow the process to get to where we're at today. And, uh, but this is what the finished frame looks like. And uh, I'll take you over to my work table here and show you how I get this ready to spray paint. Okay, now I've already done this uh, with some framing stock, but I recommend you take some of the framing stock you make, and it doesn't have to be this long, but maybe like six, seven inch corner piece, and then for the, uh, you'll see my choices of, of spray paint or whatever colors, you'll want to finish, have a corner sample like you'd see in a frame shop, and create those, whatever colors you use in your paintings, and use these little, make some corner samples to, to uh, while you're up in your studio, see what frame choice is going to go on your painting. Then you can coordinate the paint uh, with that. So I've already done that a couple years ago, so I'm all set there, but I just want to point that out. Now let me show you some of uh, the tools we'll be needing for this uh, little episode here. Okay, I use, uh, at, from Home Depot, I just use this, Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover 2 times paint and uh, I get the satin for the finish and so whatever colors you want to coordinate with your paintings the interior of my floater frames is always painted with flat black doesn't mean you have to do that, you can use a deep shade of something, I just find I like the contrast myself you'll need some uh, painters tape I, I prefer, I believe this is one and a quarter inch, even two inch will work, and you'll see why later. And then over here, these little cones, you buy them in the paint section of Home Depot, and it helps you lift things up off the surface of the table to paint, so the paint along the edge does not stick to your surface. So get you some of these, and uh, they come in very handy. All right, now let's uh, get into uh, how I do this. Now this is a multi-step process. Uh, you'll be putting a couple coats on. I've sanded this with some fine sandpaper to get it prepped, wiped off any dust, that sort of thing. You can use a uh, tack cloth to wipe it down. That'll pick up any microscopic dust. And then I lay out, I, I'll be using this color I've chosen for this frame is called Satin Warm Caramel. tends to work on a lot of my paintings, especially landscapes, because it has a warm tone to it. So that's what I'll be spraying it with. And the cones will be set up. Here's your frame. And on the back side, if you can imagine this on the table, I'm just showing you up close, but I'll show you on the table too. Your cones will be holding up the uh, corners of your frame. So that's how it will be positioned on your work surface. So as you see here, I'll just figure out where my corners are. And when I'm doing this, I'm doing 
I have a lot of frames, uh, maybe 10 or 15 frames I'll be doing. So naturally, I'll do all my 6 by 8s first so I don't have to move the cones around a lot. So that's what I have. Now let me show you how I spray it. Now once you do a couple of these, you'll get the flow. Sorry if the lighting's a little, little iffy, but I hope you can see this. You of course shake up your paint. I've already done that previously. So you're going to be rotating this. Here's how I do it. And I have a window open. You can't see off uh, about a few feet away. I have some fresh air coming in. And this is an area that I really don't care about getting paint on. But if you had a surface you need to protect, obviously, put down a tarp or a drop cloth or something of that nature. So, and I always follow this procedure for every frame. Rather than just spray the front right here and then turn it and spray the front over there and the top, I want to make sure that the paint wraps around the edge where the black's going to go later, which will make sense when you see it when I do the black. So I just do a quick to get the inside of that. Now I do this here, the front, overlaying the spray, turn it on those cones, the supports, do the inside over there and the front over here. Could take two to three light coats, so you want to uh, not slop it on there and have it run. Do the same over here, inside, do over here, over there, inside over here, outside over here, and top. And this frame's first coat is ready to dry. And I set that over in an area where I'll set the other frames. And what you want to do is take some scraps, piece of, piece of paper, to identify, if you're doing several of these, what painting this goes with and so on. Just whatever description you need on your piece of paper. Uh, blue house or, you know, whatever. Trees in, in the woods, uh, that sort of thing. And keep that with this uh, frame that's drying. So we'll get back to this after uh, this sets up. And it's going to take different time, length of time, depending on your weather conditions. So that's that. We'll continue on in a moment. Okay, we've uh, put the uh, first coat of spray paint on. And uh, this is what we got here. Now I'm going to take some very fine sandpaper and give it a very light sanding, not heavy duty, just taking off any microscopic burrs and that sort of thing on the face and the sides. And then we'll apply the uh, second coat of paint because if you look real close, uh, I don't think the camera down here will pan in appropriately, but it could be just a little bit of ghosting where it's not as thick as it needs to be in certain spots. So uh, that's why we're doing a couple light coats. All right. Okay. We're ready for coat number two. I have sanded it with this uh, fine sandpaper and uh, wiped off the dust and everything and we're ready to put another coat on. And that should do it. So again, get the inside edge, front, or one side or the other, whichever way you're facing. Turn it around, repeat over there. Do this side, and then you can just do your sides. So, pretty easy process. And that should do it for the paint job. And I meant to tell you before, every time you use your, your spray paint, just give it a little couple squirts to clean out the nozzle. And we'll let that dry. Of course, it goes without saying, if you have a window open near where you're painting, you don't want to be doing this on a windy day, blowing a lot of dust into, through the window, fine particles as the paint's drying. Um, you want to try to find an area where you can just have it be nice and still until the paint dries. Okay, we got the uh, second coat on there, and uh, now we're going to be painting the back of the frame, as you can see. This part's been painted because it's been on those little feet. 
but the back side has not. So I'm just going to take a scrap stick and I'll show you what I do to uh, paint the back. Now since those little feet here have that fine point, it's kind of hard to find a position on this side, this side of the frame as I turn it over to do the back. So what I do, I just get a scrap board and if you have multiple frames to do for the back, the next frame you put down here, you'll want to turn the board one rotation, put your next frame down, turn the board, and so on. Or you can have scraps of paper uh, that you just uh, throw away, because if you don't put the next frame in the same position, then you could potentially get, if it's a different color frame, paint from the previous spray onto your frame. So we'll just do that. Paint still, uh, it's only been I don't know, probably an hour upstairs drawing. So when I paint the back, because you can see a little bit of paint uh, got onto the frame there. So no big deal. Just spray that. And while I have it like this, I'll go ahead and do a light, just a very light spray. I mean, the sides are good, but I'll just give it a once over. Upside down can. Give it a little spray to get your nozzle clean. Now we'll let that dry. And I don't really do, uh, I, don't, I don't spray heavy, but one coat usually works well enough. So we'll let that dry, then we'll get on to uh, how I do the inside and paint it black. Okay, we've got the uh, frame painted on all sides now. Now I'm going to show you how I use the painter's tape to mark off the top of the frame here so we can spray paint the interior of the frame black. So uh, let me zoom in here and show you that. Okay, in a perfect world you'd have like a work surface flat and everything and a good light. And I'm just down here in my basement where I do the work. So I've uh, found this spot that works pretty good for this. And you just take a piece of the painter's tape that's a little bit longer then each edge and you want to line it up on the inside edge of the face of the frame so we do that and we press down and painters tape is low tack so that's why I'm using painters tape really burnish that in there then I rotate the frame around and repeat all around to protect the face of the frame for when I paint it black on the inside. So I'm going to do the other two sides and show you what it looks like. Okay, so there's what we have with the tape put on there. Now I'm going to uh, give it a spray. Okay, shaking up the paint as usual. Really get it mixed. And just going to give it a coating here. Rotate the frame around. I do it this way because it's easier than leaning in or something. So again, light coats. Okay, we let that dry. And also this tape, once it's dry, completely dry, I get uh, sometimes two or three uses out of this tape because it peels right up uh, easily and uh, no sense just wasting it uh, every time you do one frame. Let me show you a few uh, what I do with it. So I just peel it off and I got a pipe down here. I just kind of lightly tack it to that and you can see all the pieces here. You may not get use out of uh, all the pieces but Hey, if you can reuse some of it, it works pretty good. So uh, no sense uh, wasting, uh, you know, too much stuff. So yeah, just an idea. So as usual, that'll get uh, another coat once that uh, is dry, completely dry. And uh, then we'll be done with the frame. And uh, we'll go from uh, here in the little workshop area up to the studio. Then I'll show you uh, ways that I put these, uh, my paintings in the frames. Okay, the frame is uh, now complete. 
we've got the inside painted black, as you can see. And now we're just going to peel off the painter's tape to reveal the facing of the frame. And that's it. That is the frame all complete and ready to be taken upstairs and have the painting put in it. So uh, now we're going to head up there and I'll show you what I do. Hey everybody, before we continue on with the video, I just want to take this opportunity to let everyone know that I'm thinking about putting together a Q&A video. I've really enjoyed the ones I've seen on YouTube to kind of get a different angle of the artists that I watch and that sort of thing. So. Uh, if you want to ask me a question, put them in the comments below, and uh, if I get enough responses, I'll put together a video and get it out there. So uh, here's the opportunity. Okay, let's continue on with the video. Okay, we're up in the studio now. I have the frame, and I'm going to show you the tools that I use. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, a lot of you that have done any framing will know about all this, but for those of you that don't, you'll learn something new today. So uh, let me pan down and show you. Okay, I have my frame here. I have my little assortment of uh, screw eyes and such. I keep other screws, regular screws too, all kinds of stuff that I would use for framing. I have like a little awl that I'll just put a, a pin prick for where the uh, uh, hole for the screw eye will go. Little Dremel tool I use to pre drill the hole for the screw eye. Some picture wire we'll be using. Snips for the wire, a little bit of wood glue because this frame will accept a panel. Okay, first thing I do before I get to uh, working away on the frame, I'm pretty careful downstairs when I measure and everything, but the first thing I do, here's my painting on panel. I always pretty much paint my small pieces on panel, MDF board. As I put it in a frame, and move it around to make sure it's not going to be that the frame is the correct size and the reveal is what I want so that's what we got here looks good and now we'll proceed with uh, putting it in the frame and I'll take the painting out now we want to flip the frame over measure we got nine inches, and I want to put a mark a third of the way down, which is three. I'll just put a little divot in the wood with the awl, both sides. Now you can also use a uh, color pencil, like a light colored whatever, to mark the hole too. But I use the awl, no big deal. And now I'm going to drill some holes. Okay. We have the uh, picture wire on, attached, and I've taken glue for this smaller painting. You only need to put it in the corners. If it was a bigger painting, longer, taller, I'd put a few strips in the centers. But this will be plenty. And then I just put it down in the frame, making sure you put it right side up so you don't have the picture wire upside down. And I just visually center it in the frame Put it down on my surface, look down again, make sure it looks okay. Then I use some wax paper to weight it down. Now just use these little hand weights. You can go buy some, but believe it or not, a lot of times I find uh, uh, they tend to have them a lot at Goodwill or someplace like that. So I can get these for a dollar. And then I let that dry. And that's it for uh, doing a panel in a, one of my frames. Now what I do for canvases is I make the proper depth frame. In this case, this is a little older frame, but I've taken slats of wood. I've attached a piece of pine strip using a three-quarter wide board. I just cut it into another three-quarter wide strip. I screwed it to this uh, plank of wood here, making sure the screw did not extend past the outside of the frame. What I do now uh, when I make these is I take this strip of wood 
and I clamp it overnight. I take the total length of the molding I'm going to need, I attach this strip of wood and I clamp it and glue it and leave it overnight and then I chop on my chop saw the pieces of, of framing material I need and make the frame. But now once I have this, I know like this is a 16 by 20, so I've calculated approximately 5, 6 inches, a little shorter on the short side, and that's where I'll put my, my attach it to uh, the frame using screws, which I'll show you in a moment. Depending on the length, how wide your, your painting is, will determine if you need a, a screw eye in the center. And the screw eyes are not right up against the edge of your wood. I pre-drilled the hole, put the screw eye in. If You want to always pre-drill. And it doesn't need to be right up against the edge. You don't want to take a chance of cracking that. So because the length of screw I'm using. So now I'll show you how I put a canvas in there. But first, the screws I'll be using are approximately three-quarter screws, depending on how far you got to go with your screw eye. So that's plenty long enough to connect into the stretcher bar on the back of, you know, on your canvas. Now for demonstration purposes here, I'm just going to take a blank canvas. I'm not actually going to go through the final step of screwing it in there, but you want to make sure again, you didn't make a mistake cutting your frame before you go through all this work, which you should do actually before you put the screw eyes in like I showed you before. So it looks like it fits in there good. Now I've taken some pieces of cardboard. You can also use foam core strips. And I usually calculate my distance around the canvas to the frame to be a quarter inch, 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch. So I can just put in spacers. I start in the center on each side. See if it's going to find its own center there. Looks good. And then you have other pieces you put in the corners. And another option is to just do the corners because they'll find their own center in the rest of the frame. What you don't want to do is force the cardboard in there super tight. It can literally bow your frame out if you're not careful. You just need it tight enough in there for the next step. So I'm just lightly wedging in the second piece of cardboard. And we are all centered. And there you go. That's what it looks like. Now I just stand it up. Tilt the camera here. And normally you'll be having this painted. So you want to have, I'm just using a paper towel on this regular canvas, but you'll want to use some wax paper and just you're holding the frame and just holding the canvas in there a bit and where those screw eyes are is where you'll drill a pilot hole and screw in your screws that I showed you before and what I, once you have your, your you drill each hole and I put in a screw and I rotate the frame all the way around and do the opposing corner and screw that in so that it, it's not like you're screwing one side because any minute little pulling here and there could pull it off center. So just alternate your corners almost like you're putting on a tire from a flat. You want to alternate the lug nuts. So then you can finish off putting in the rest of the screws. But that's how I put it into a canvas. I mean put a canvas into the uh, frame. Okay, well this concludes this uh, part three, concludes the little series on how I make my uh, floater frames and attach my paintings into the frames. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description box below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I post some stuff there, art-related uh, works in progress and uh, all that kind of thing. And of course you'll see the links for Facebook. Uh, down below and uh, again if you're new to the channel I invite you to subscribe so until the next video bye